The views and opinions provided on this show are for informational purposes only and should not be misinterpreted as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, please go to PassiveInvestorShow.com. Hey, PI listeners, this is John Fortes. I'm making it a point to speak to as many investors as possible. My goal is to position myself to be a blessing to my network through conversation. How could one be a blessing through conversation? The easy answer is by listening. A simple conversation can open many opportunities and doors. I always ask myself this, what do I have to lose by having one more conversation? Going back to high school, I've connected friends and family in my network to one another, even if it didn't benefit me and I continue those same principles and practices. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. If I can't help you, I probably know someone or something that can probably solve your problem. I'd love for you to become a part of that network. Go to www.johnfortes.com, create your investor profile, and schedule a call. How can I best serve you through conversation? In the words of Clarence the Angel from It's a Wonderful Life, no man is a failure who has friends. And now, the Passive Investor Show. Here's your host, John Fortes. Welcome, PI listeners, to the Passive Investor Show. I'm the Passive Investor Consultant, John Fortes your host of the only ranked podcast for passive investors in multifamily syndications and real estate funds. Our goal and purpose of this show is to be a resource to investors and help them master their passive investments by beating inflation 1% at a time. Hello, PI listeners. Thank you for lending me your time today. Welcome to the Passive Investor Show. I'm John Fortes. Our goal is to provide you, the busy professional, with passive investing tips and tricks for your real estate investments to leverage more time for you to focus on your true passions. Let's get to work. Today, I want to dive in into this quick hitter, bank accounts and their importance, and just kind of explain the different typical four to five bank accounts, depending on uh, the operator and the sponsor of what goes into this business plan and, and keeping everything organized. These bank accounts used by the general partners to properly account and distribute the funds in syndicated multifamily acquisitions. First, you'll have the operating account. Those are reserve funds to cover things like unexpected dips in occupancy, lump sum taxes and insurance payments, reoccurring monthly expenses or capital expenditures, Um, all dependent on the operator, like I said, right? Then you might have a uh, capital expenditures account. You probably will because that's dedicated to your big ticket project budget. Uh, everything with the, you know, like you said, the, like I said in the previous episode, the capital, the CapEx budget, which is the big ticket projects, right? So everything that you plan on going ahead, uh, going in doing as part of the new uh under new management, you're gonna be uh, kitchens and uh, maybe a, a, a new, uh, you're doing exterior work where you're, 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 you're providing a huge, uh, nice curbside appeal uh, where it's a landscaping project and stuff like that. So uh, maybe it's HVACs that you need to, ch- uh, to ch- swap out or you're projecting that the chillers might need to be replaced with something else, um, depending on the market that you're in. So that, you know, keeping an account for that, just those big ticket items is is a good idea to have. So then you'll have an account for the security deposits, you know, that's the the positive money to the owner to ensure that rent will be paid and other responsibilities of the lease are performed. Uh, That's with the tenants and the, the, the owner and that's to uh you know the basically the security deposits that the tenant plays uh upon leasing up uh so there you go with that one and then you'll have the the escrow account typically the escrow account 
could be part of your operating uh, account. Um, some operators use it, some operators lump it in uh, into the operating account. So the escrow account uh, items that are accrued and paid periodically, such as taxes and insurance. So uh, if you're not making monthly payments to taxes and insurance, so, uh, and they're, they could be sitting in that account for coming down the road. And like, like I said, that could be in the operating account already because you're already paying taxes and like uh, uh, insurance payments out of that account anyway. So it's just a, a placeholder for some, some people like to see it visually broken down into that. And some people just uh, manage it well in the, through the operating account. And then you have the account for owner distributions. Uh, that's to be paid, the, the proceeds to be paid to the general partners and limited partners. Uh, you want to make sure you have your ducks in a row when you're, when you're reporting uh, financial, financials and distributing your cash back to the partners that invested into the project. So everybody that's investing passively as a limited, pa limited partner and then all the general partners involved on that side, that's where they'll get paid from. So just to keep all of this uh, summed up, you have the operating account, the capital expenditure account, security deposits, escrow account. That, like I said, is optional and could be lumped in with the operating account. Some operators are different, as I mentioned. And then you have the owner distributions account. That's, the, that's how everybody gets paid. So when we're purchasing multifamily apartments, whether it's a 50 unit, 100 unit, 400 unit, uh, we're going in with a business plan and it needs to be structured properly. And you want to make sure you have these accounts lined up for, you know, great organization. There you have it. The bank accounts needed to run your business and make your accountant's job easy as possible. They will thank you. Organizing this way allows you to easily coordinate payments, whether it be a total CapEx project or distributions to the limited partners or the general partners in general. So to all partners, owners involved. PI listeners, I appreciate you for listening. If any of this resonates with you, please subscribe and leave a review. The more you know, the more we grow. Thank you for tuning in. Till next time. Don't forget to download your free copy of the investment tracker. It allows you to track up to five investments, compare sponsors, markets, and most importantly, projected versus actual returns. To get your copy, go to www.projectedreturns.com. PI listeners, thank you for listening. As always, we hope this was the best resource for your investment strategy, but also the best use of your time. Remember, if this episode helps you, you can help us by leaving a review on iTunes. I hope you feel compelled enough to share it with someone you think this would resonate with as well. As much as it pains us to leave you, but you know what time it is. Time to go put this into practice. Till the next time we meet, happy investing. PI listeners, I'm grateful for your time and I appreciate you for listening. It would mean the world to me if you went to iTunes and left a rating and written review. Let me know how you feel about the show. It really makes a big difference with getting the podcast out there. Don't forget about our Facebook group, where all of our guests are members of. I'll be there to answer any of your questions, or even questions you might have for future guests. Subscribe so you can get the latest episodes and our fan favorite quick hitters. Finally, I want to keep you updated, so head over to johnfortes.com and sign up for the newsletter. If you're interested in partnering with me, sign up on the contact page so you can talk to me directly. I look forward to connecting with you. Happy investing.